What's up? What's up, Rock Church? How y'all doing today? Y'all excited? Y'all excited? Hey, everybody who has a, a jersey on from the Seahawks, can y'all stand up? Can y'all stand up? Look at all these Seahawks have. How did all, how, how did all the Seahawks jerseys get here? Like, none, there's none back there. There's none back there. The only right up front. Did, y'all, did, they, did they let y'all to the front of the line? Whoa. We got any Charger fans in here? <laughs> do, do we have any L.A. Chargers? Sad, sad, sad. Hey, listen, uh, before we start, I want to say hello to everybody uh, watching at our campuses, East County, North County, San Ysidro, everybody watching online. Let's give all those people out there a big hand. What's up, y'all? What's up? <laughs> My name is Miles. I'm the pastor. And before we start all our services, we pray. So I'm going to ask all y'all to let's get on our knees. If you're a visitor, we'll, we'll, we'll get you baptized into this process. Get on our knees. Amen. Lord, thank you so much for today. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. And we pray you bless us tonight and that you would speak to us and encourage us. In Jesus' name, amen. Give someone a high five next to you. Someone a high five. Um, before I start, let me say that, that we have in your bulletin, if you ever have a bulletin, in all the campuses, if you have a bulletin, you look in your bulletin, if there is a sticker in your bulletin, if, if did anybody see a sticker in your bulletin here at Loma, just, uh, if you have one, just raise your hand so you, someone can say they see it. Anybody got, you got a sticker? Okay. If in all the campuses, if you have a sticker in your bulletin, we have a signed uh, Russell Wilson hat in the lobby for, uh, Sorry, sorry. Most of y'all are not going to get one. Sorry. It's <laughs> jacked up, huh? Uh, we have a sign hat in the lobby and all the campuses for you. Amen? Amen. So um, we're excited to have Russell Wilson here. Um, I, well, I'll talk more about him when I, we, when I met him. Um, but I'm just going to give you some stats for all y'all who don't know. How many of y'all are not football fans? Welcome, welcome. <laughs> you will have a life after basketball. Football is, a, is a, football is the official sport of heaven. <laughs> I need to tell you why. Because see, in football, and this is if you I, I, when Russell comes up here, I'll tell it, tell the story because I'll get him up here real quick because we want to spend time with him. But uh, f- let me give you some stats, and we'll talk more about his stats when we get here. One, uh, he has the rookie record for TDs. Tie, tie, tie with Peyton Manning. Uh, he has the most wins ever in the first three years of any quarterback. He has the second best passer rating over the past three years, second to uh, Aaron Rodgers. And he's the o- Green Bay Packer fans. And he's, and he's the only, uh, only quarterback ever to go to the Super Bowl twice in his first three years. And so, amen. Amen. And so listen, we, let's give a warm rock welcome to Super Bowl winning quarterback, two-time Super Bowl, Russell Wilson. Let's give him, give him a hand. Amen. guys I know. You guys hear me? You guys hear me all right? It's one of the best guys I know. So you guys are uh, very blessed to have this guy right here. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. How you doing? Great, man. It's, uh, it's, good, to, it's good to be here. I, I, uh, you know, I, I'm, good to, I'm glad to see all the Seahawks fans are up front, you know. Just, so we, just in case we get in a fight or a brawl tonight, you know, I know, I know where they're at, you know what I'm saying? So Russell and I met uh, when he was, uh, well, I was watching you in college, and I said, that guy can play. And I was, well, obviously, I I really was blessed. And then I got to 
we met at the FCA. Do you yeah. remember that? I do. We, talk to that we, were, game. Uh, we were in L.A. I was playing for the Rose Bowl, getting ready for the Rose Bowl. I played at University of Wisconsin my senior year. We were, uh, exciting stuff. Good. Are those the same fans that are Packers fans? Or... <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, we're getting ready for the Rose Bowl, and, and I had the opportunity, uh, a blessing to speak at the FCA luncheon, and uh, with tons, of, I mean, probably 2,000, 3,000 or some people, I would think. There's about 500 people there, but go ahead. Seemed like, <laughs> like, I don't know, uh, <laughs> it seemed like it. So anyways, um, but it, it was a great opportunity, and I got to meet Miles and talk to him for a little bit, and that's where I got to know him, and then fast forward, a year later, I ended up going to PAO. Uh, which was in, uh, what was that? I think that was in, that was in that was Florida. Orlando. That was yeah, Orlando. Orlando. Yeah, yeah, Florida. So we went to Orlando, and that's when I met Miles, and ever since we've been talking, I've been close since. So uh, he's, he's been there for me in so many different ways, and uh, it's been a blessing to get to know him and uh, get to know this church through him and, and how Jesus is working through you guys and just to see the impact uh, that, that this church is having over this, the city of San Diego and the state of California, just all over, really. Good. So when we met, you were, you were about... Were you, how much do you weigh now? Uh, I weigh about 217, 218 now. Because you were a little skinny little brother at the time. I would. <laughs> Relatively speaking. Because like, we took a picture. You, no, I've never been skinny. Now. Well, you weren't skinny. You were just kind of svelte. <laughs> I, was, I, was about, I was about 207 then. Really? Yeah. Was, and you were, like, were you about 5'9"? 5'8". Uh, <laughs> how tall are you for real? Uh, I'm technically I'm 5'10 and 7'8". <laughs> or 5'10 and 5'8 or something like that. I don't know. Cause I'm five eleven and seven eight. So here's the deal. I, I, I don't. See, remember I told you I was five when we did that with Sh- Karen Shamrock. I was saying five eleven and seven eight. Cause when they measure you, they want you to be shorter so they can say you're not tall, right? Exactly. Or you're, you're not. You're not. You can't throw over the lineman, so they don't want to pay you a lot of money. And so I want to do a little video here on my camera on my phone because um, let's stand up, stand up. So 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 here's the thing. I have an app called Miles a Minute. How many of y'all have my Miles a Minute app? Amen. Amen. So if you don't if you don't have it, it's a it's a it's an app where you get one minute video every day from me for a whole year, 365 videos. So I'm gonna do one right now in front of y'all. Oh, we get to do a selfie one? Yeah, we're gonna do a selfie one. Okay, okay. All so right. it's, a, like it's it. a selfie video. Can we get the crowd behind? Yeah, us? Yeah, we can get the, the crowd behind. So so yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. standing here. Just a little just a little teaser. Yeah, yeah it's a little teaser. So so who is taller right now? Well, uh, I, I, t- I took my uh, heel lifts out, so, so you, you I only, don't have those. How tall right are you? Uh, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, five, five, ten, five, eight. Look, look at that. That's cool. Oh, wait, we're recording this right now? Yeah, man, we're recording. Look, look, look at the screen. <laughs> ah, shoot. You got so, t- t- how, so how tall are you? Five, ten, and five, eight. Five, ten, and five, eight. I'm, f- I'm five, eleven, and seven, eight. And you, <laughs> I'm f- I'm f- I, got my, I got my hair a little spiked up. You're still shorter than me. Yeah. But you know, man looks at the outward appearance. How many, how many Super Bowls have you won? I've won one, lost one. So and, I've been to two. And I haven't even, I've only been to one in the, in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And whether you're short or tall, because you're short and I'm tall. Uh, I'm fast, you're slow. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you're rich and I'm not. <laughs> oh, <whatever. laughs> that's what you uh, Trust me. And, uh, uh, but God looks at the heart. So no matter what people say about your height, uh, your shape, whatever, if God has a plan for your life, it'll happen. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So let's, let's go back to when you were a kid, grew up. Yeah. I know you have, I, I've seen pictures of your family, your mom, your, your brother, your sister, your dad. Tell, tell us about all that. Yeah, growing up, uh, I had, I had an awesome family. I had my mom, my dad. I, I, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. I, I, moved at a, I, moved at, I moved at a really young age, moved to Richmond, Virginia. I was a terrible kid growing up, though. I was, uh, I mean, when I say terrible, I used to get in fights all the time. I was a bully. Um, I, was, I was a troublemaker. I, literally, in, in sixth grade, I had to go to the principal's office every day. I'm, I'm not, that's not an exaggeration. I literally went every day. Um, and uh, I, I never got detention. I always talked my way out of it somehow. Um, but, uh, you know, I always worked hard and stuff, so they, they let me go. But, um, you know, a lot of those times, though, I think people were just trying to get me in trouble. I wasn't always, I wasn't that bad. Um, <laughs> kind of. Um, but, you know, I, I, uh, I was a troublemaker growing up. And, um, you know, I was, I'll never forget, um, I was at UVA football camp. UVA football camp was a Saturday night, and, um, and I had a dream. 
You know, I, was, I, had, a, I was, had a really, really close relationship with my dad and my mom and my brother as well, but I was really, really close with my dad. And uh, it was Saturday night, and uh, I, had, I had a dream that uh, my dad had passed away. You know, I was 14 years old, and Jesus walks into the room, and I had my roommate, you know, you know next to me or whatever. And, um, and I never forget Jesus walk into the room, and, and I was shocked. I didn't really know what was going on, it seemed like. And, and, uh, and he said, Jesus said to me, he said, I'm preparing you. He said, I'm preparing you. I was 14 years old. And, uh, and you know, I, I couldn't really go back to sleep, and my, my, I kind of got up really fast, and my, uh, my roommate, uh, he looked at me, he's like, you're all right, bro? <laughs> I was like, yeah, uh, yeah I am good. You know, so the next morning I, I, got, I got up and my dad had picked me up and my mom and we went to, uh, they picked me up from UVA, went back to Richmond, only 45 minute ride, got to church and I, I used to go to church to see this one good looking girl. <laughs> there was this one good looking girl, her name was Carice and I just, I just, I just had to see her every time, you know. But, uh, and she was older than me, I always liked older, older girls at the time. How old so. was she, 14 and a half? No, she was a... <laughs> She was like a singer in high school, and I was in like sixth grade. <laughs> she liked me. She they got words for people you know? like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so anyways, though, so I had, uh, so my, my uh, so anyways, I, I, I go to church that day, and I was always the kid that was tearing up paper and making noise in church just to try to bother people, you know, and, uh, and I just felt the Holy Spirit just come, you know, through me, just like the night before, but um, I felt the Holy Spirit just overcome me. And so peace, I, I, a peace yeah, came over you. A, yeah, a sense of just, um, I started tearing up and just, I felt something different, you know, and um, I knew it, I, I knew at that moment it, it had to be Jesus. And so, um, you know, I prayed right then and there and then walked up and got an altar call and got saved and my, my life just um, continued to just change. And it wasn't all perfect, you know, it, everything hasn't been perfect in my life by any means, you know, I've, I've gone through some tough stuff and I, you know, um, you know, I've been through some. I've been through some things. You know, I I, I saw my dad pass away. I, I got drafted June eighth, two thousand ten, in baseball. I've been drafted three times in baseball, out of high school and college. Uh, in the beginning of the fourth round, I got uh, on June eighth, two thousand ten. The next day, um, the next day, my dad passed away. How, how did? So, how did? What did he pass away from? Uh, he had diabetes, so his leg got amputated. And that, that's a whole another story we can get into if you want to. It's it's uh, kind of crazy, but. Um, and I'll tell it because I think it's I think it's kind of miraculous. That, so fast forwarding, I was in high school. I was supposed to be a first round draft pick, um, you know, and uh, I got offered a million dollars by multiple teams. I turned it down. I wanted to go to college to play football and baseball. I wanted to play two sports. So you're in high school. You got offered a million dollars to go play baseball, and you said I want to go to college. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so there's a lot of people out there going, why? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not skip over that. So, sometimes I wonder what would happen. You know, I think, uh, you know, but um, you, you know, want to tell I, them why? You know, so yeah, I, I, I want, I, <laughs> the reason why is because I, I wanted to get my education. I wanted to, I knew, I trusted, at that point in my life, I, I was very strong in my faith. You know, I was really, really strong in my senior year in, in high school. And I just trusted that whatever God had for me, it, it was going to happen. If it was meant for me, uh, if it was meant for me then, it was going to be meant for me later. You know? And so I trusted it. I, I wanted to get my education. I, my, my dad went to Dartmouth College. He, he graduated top of his class. He went to uh, UVA Law School, graduate president of his class, being an African-American male, that's tough to do in, back then. And then my mom went to, uh, went to UVA undergrad and went to Z uh, Xavier Nursing School. And so I had two parents that were, that were hardworking people that really, really uh, preached education to give me an opportunity. And so for me, I, I, I wanted to continue to pursue that. And, and, um, but I still wanted to play big-time football, big-time baseball. I still had those dreams. Which was your, which was your preference? Both. You asked me a question. Which was your preference? Uh, I, I love them both. I, there was no, there's no preference. So, so we see you on Instagram, right? And, and sometimes you're, because you, you go to, you're, the, you're property of the Rangers, right? Yeah. So you're, property, that's an interesting way to but that's, it. But that's how they say it, right? <laughs> In yeah. baseball, right? So yeah. they own you, basically. And you go there for one day. And yeah. I know it's, it's fun and exciting, but, but which one, will you ever play baseball? I, I have no idea. I, I think that for me, um, I know football is, uh, and that's a whole other story too. I can tell that one too. But um, you have to be, you have to be committed to football. You can't. Yeah. The other you know, sports uh, you can dibble and dabble. Yeah, you know, playing playing quarterbacks, you know, in a whole different ball game and playing a different position and doing playing two sports. Um, I, I believe if anybody could do it, I could, and I believe God's put me, gave me the ability to do it. I've done it my whole life, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't think that far. I try not to think that far. I just, 
you know, I, growing up, I loved being outside. I loved playing multiple sports. And that's one thing that I always, like, I, I do camps for kids. And I, one of the things I always tell the kids is, like, you know, and the parents, we have a Q&A. And I always tell them, you know, get your kids outside. You know, there's so many kids that are playing video games and stuff like that. And for me, it's crazy. you know, growing up and learning how to play and how to communicate and relate to so many different people, I was outside. I was actually doing it outside. I was pl- competing against older people. So... Um, I do love baseball. You know, there's nothing like the, the green grass. You know, we run out there. But there's something about having the we football We got green in your grass hands. in football. <laughs> it's usually turf. Uh, but there's something, there's something about having uh, the, the, the football in your hand with the game on the line. So tell them, you're, you're a quarterback, and, and tell them how many plays you'll have going into a game, and then tell them a play. We did this with, with uh, when we had Drew Brees here. Uh, but people think, and for all y'all who weren't here, people think you get in the huddle and go, okay, go out there, I'm going to throw it to you. Can you explain to them how complicated it is? To tell them a play and then tell them what it means. Um, okay, so, so it, we'll probably have an, an, an actual game plan. We'll probably have, I don't know, 400-some plays, 300-some plays, from runs to passes to, to alerts to checks to, you know, no huddles to all Can that Can you say it again slow, 300? Maybe more sometimes. Okay. So it's a lot of plays. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, so the quarterback always has to know what everybody else is doing and what's going on. Uh, has to be able to change the play, do all that kind of stuff. So it, it's not a, it's a lot of studying. It's, 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 more, it's more than just taking ground balls, I'll say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not but more difficult than baseball. Mentally, it can be. And sure. physically. Yeah, physically. And emotionally. <laughs> you trying to convince somebody? No, man. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to represent. I'm trying to represent. <laughs> Here's why, football is the, here's why football is the best sport in, in, in the planet. Because when you, when you watch a football game and you see a guy, I mean, you got beast mode. Okay, how much does beast mode weigh, 250? No, he's, he's not as big. He's like two, 230. Okay, so he's th- 230 and he'll get hit by two guys, 320, 320. Yeah. Boom. Th- and that would break a house, th- that impact. Right? That's true. He'll go down and what will he say when he gets up, while he's getting up? He'll be talking trash. Yeah, I don't know what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're in church. Maybe I, maybe I picked the wrong guy. <laughs> okay, when he gets back to the huddle, he'll say, yo, give me the ball again. Because in football, you hit a guy, bam, and you get up and you start talking trash. When the devil punches you in the mouth, you got to be able to say, get, that's all you got. Basketball, you touch a guy like that, he wants two free shots. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So can you tell them a play in football? Tell them one of your plays. Yeah, um, we'll go uh, gun double right, empty trouble, uh, three scat dancer, X shallow, alert, three scat, da- three scat packer. That's a, that's a full play call. So we get to the, we, y- Y'all get to the line of scrimmage, and the safety is doing something you didn't think he was yeah, supposed we, to be doing. We'll change the play and check it and do all that stuff. Yeah, because then we come out, we got to look at them, and we, See, we that's, move. That's why you play defense. Why? Why? What's, when you say that's why, what's the that? We'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> pound for pound, who are the best athletes on the field? Pound for pound? Yeah, for reals. On average, who are the best athletes on the field? Well, I, you, you, if you think about athletes, uh, <laughs> You have to be able to catch. You're thinking too that. much. You're thinking too much. Um, so you're thinking corners. Absolutely. DBs. DBs. Absolutely. <laughs> right? We'll when you say that. it? We'll leave it, we'll leave it at that. DBs. <laughs> DBs. Uh, your father passed away. What did that do? How did you deal with that? How did that impact you? Well, before, before that, I, I had a, a, a crazy. So you know, going back to high school, right? So I, I had an opportunity to get drafted. I promised my dad I'd graduate in three years, going to college. I took 18 credits every semester. So I played football and baseball, went to NC State, um, you know, did all that. My, as soon as baseball, I... Baseball, football, and 18 credits, and you yeah. graduate in three and a half, three years. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> I was a little bit crazy. By the way, when you listen to a story like this, some of y'all like entertainment, entertainment. It's a journey with God. Yeah, it's true. And every single one of us is on a journey with God. And every single one of us... A lot of times we look at people on television and we only see the highlight film. You know, the, the, the Instagram pictures, the awards things, the, the touchdowns, all that kind of stuff, but we don't see the real life. So part of this is to see real life. 18 credits in two sports is real life. You don't fake that. You don't pay for that. You know, t- saying no to a million dollars twice in high school, 
I don't know how many of y'all, I wouldn't have done that. I, I'm trying to get paid in high school, okay? <laughs> I don't know that I wouldn't have done that, but that would be a hard decision. So it's real life and how does God weave in real life and how does God deal with people? Uh, because we want you to be considering your relationship with God. Because in a few minutes, we're going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ, just like he did, just like I did, just like thousands of y'all out there did. Amen? Okay. You know, so... I, at that point in my life, I, I, I decided to go to NC State, do all that. As soon as I got to NC State, though, my dad got, you know, extremely sick. He had diabetes, and he's a very healthy guy. He, he, was in shape. he actually uh, played with the Chargers for a short period of time. When, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I know the San Diego Super Chargers chant. I know all that stuff. Um, <laughs> um, so, anyway, so my, my dad. Is there um, a reason why you, why you like me? I don't, that's, how I, that's, how I, that's how I lean in the car. You want me to sit up like you? No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so anyways, Are you mocking me in front of my people? Of course not. Of course not. Why would I ever? Um, you can lean. You can do, do your gangs to lean right in church. Go ahead. There you go. I'm trying to see the whole crowd. I get you. Know? I get you. But there's people over here you can see. Yeah. Okay. I, I can see them. You know, okay. I can see okay. everybody. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell, um, tell us your story, brother. But anyway, so I, I had... Um, you know, going through all that, you know, my dad got extremely sick. His leg swol- had swollen up. He had to get his uh, leg amputated, um, you know. And, and so my mom traveled for work. And uh, so my dad had a prosthetic leg going into my, my, my freshman year or whatever. And, and so she comes home uh, about a month before my first college football game. And she comes home. She can't get in the house late at night. So she calls 911. They break into the house. My dad's l- prosthetic leg had fallen off. Uh, he had hit, the, hit his head on the corner of the table, split his head open, blood everywhere and everything like that, unconscious for eight or nine hours. Uh, suffered a stroke. And uh, so my dad, this is, like I said, about a month before my first college football game. I wasn't named starter yet or anything like that. And um, so all those things were going on. And uh, it was the week of my, of my first fo- college football game now. And it was, my dad had been in a coma for three weeks. And uh, it was a Monday. My, college, my, my game was on a Thursday night, and my mom calls me hysterically crying around 11.30 at night saying, hey, you know, they're, they're, they're saying that, the, that uh, your dad's not going to live any longer, that he only has, you know, about 12 more hours or so. My mom's face is crazy strong. She's like, I'm not going to believe it. I, I believe that Jesus is going to heal him, blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and so we pray on the phone. I, I go back to bed. She calls me at 1.30 in the morning, you know, uh, that night. And, uh, you know, I've, I had my phone on high, and, of course, I'm freaking out because, you know, you get a call that late, you're, you know, panicking here, and so I, I answer the phone, and she's hysterically crying again, and, and my mom was an ER nurse, so she's seen it all, so anyway, so my, uh, my mom had said, you wouldn't believe it, you wouldn't believe what happened, you know, and so she, she, she starts telling me the story, she says, you know, I started singing this song called All By Grace to him in his ear, meanwhile, my, like I said, my dad's in a coma, and he, start, he kind of moves a little bit, and so she, she freaks out. She runs to go get the doctors. They come back in. The doctor's like, sorry, ma'am, this happens sometimes, especially when you're experiencing a tragedy. You know, sometimes these things happen. And so anyways, she was like, no, 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 just wait. So she leans back down, lays back down with him, and starts singing all by grace to him in his ear again. And all of a sudden, she says, move your right hand. He moves his right. Move your left hand. He moves his left. Move your right foot. Move your left foot. He wakes up out of it right there. Whoa, whoa. And, uh, and so... So as a freshman and going through all the things I was going through and uh, all the great things, but all the challenging things I was going through, and, and I had set my mind on what I was going to accomplish. You know, I, I knew I had a goal in mind. I was going to make it very clear, clear cut, like I'm going to graduate in three years no matter what it takes. I'm going to play football and baseball. I'm going to be very good at it. I'm going to do everything I can, you know. And, uh, and I wasn't the best student in the world. I, I just had to work. Like I was, I was a worker. I was going to outwork anything that I could do. What was your you know? GPA? In college, I was a 4.0, but in, 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 in high school, middle school, like, like coming up in high middle school, I, I, up until about 10th, 11th grade, I was a C plus, you know, C student, B minus sometimes. So what changed? Um, well, after I got saved, I really got my life together. Like in 7th grade, I really started getting my life together, getting things in order. And then about 9th, 10th of grade, in beginning, of, beginning or middle of 10th grade, I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do everything, everything that I put into football and baseball, I'm going to put into the same thing I do in everything I do, you know, whether if it's my faith, whether if it's, you know, school, no matter what. So that's when things started really to go for me. And, uh, and so that's kind of how it started to change for me. But I've been through so much, and I've experienced um, 
you know, some heartache. You know, I, my, my, so like I said, June 8, 2010, I was drafted at the beginning of the fourth round. There's six, like 60 rounds in baseball. Um, and so I was drafted at the beginning of the fourth round of Colorado Rockies. I go home, um, you know, and the, and the next day my dad passes away. And what got me through that, though, was, was to know that Jesus was preparing me. Mm-hmm. You know, what, what he had had for me. He, he was, my dad was waiting to make sure that I was okay mm. through God. Like, just, mm. he just knew. Like, you know, and, and so for me, I just trusted. I trusted. My, my mm. family trusted. Mm. We came together. We loved each other. Um, everything wasn't perfect, you know. Um, my mom was having hard times and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it, was, it wasn't easy, you know. Um, and so, and, and my mom and I's relationship was starting to waver a little bit because of, because of, I think all the, and, and before, I never really thought back to this when I was in college because I was so into what I was doing, but I never really realized how hard it was for my mom to have to go to the hospital every day to see my dad, every night, to deal with that every single day, and, and also my sister who was at home. Um, so she had to handle so many different things. Mm-hmm. She had to be the leader in so many different ways. Right. Right. And so I kind of lost track of that, too. And as I got older and got more mature and uh, go, finished college and all that, I was like, okay, wow, like, what a blessing. So you, your dad passed. Now you got a, a sister who plays basketball and you got one brother? Yeah, I got an older brother. And then you have a girlfriend, I heard. I, I do have a girlfriend, yes. She's, uh, she's a sweetheart. She's a sweetheart. Tell us about your girlfriend. Tell us about your girlfriend. You got a girlfriend. <laughs> you got a girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The reason is because... I knew when he didn't have a girlfriend, and uh, and and I and well through a bunch of ups and downs in 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 that part. But here you go, <laughs> hey, there she go. Yeah, that's that's my girlfriend, Sierra. Yeah, Sierra. Yeah, she's a sweetheart. She's uh, she's everything you could ever want, honestly. Uh, so yeah, she's a special girl. Um, and I met her. I don't know how how long ago, um, five six months ago, and uh, you know, funny thing is, I. I uh, I told somebody um, that that's the girl I wanted to be with before I ever met her. Did you, is when you saw her or she was, before you hadn't I, met before her? Before I met her, I was like, I was like I'm probably going to end up with Sierra. <laughs> True story. So tell us how your relationship is going now, especially uh, being an outspoken believer in Christ. She's a believer? Yes, she is. And so how are y'all doing? You know, there's a difference between a believer and a follower, though. Okay, is she a follower? That's good. Yes, yeah, she's a follower. Good, I just want to make sure. So, you, you know, and... and uh, yeah, so she's a, she's a special girl. She, she's been through some heartaches, too. I've been through some heartaches. I was married before. Um, you know, I, I married um, the person I was with in high school since I was, like, 15 years old, you know. Um, that didn't work out, unfortunately. But for me, um, I, I, I just trusted that God would he- do the healing process, would, would figure things out for me. And just, you know, I, I, you know I, I'd gone through some ups and downs and all that. So I, I had to really, really focus on walking in the spirit and living in it. And so I met this girl named Sierra who was, you know, m- most beautiful woman in the world. Um, she's the most kind person, the most engaging person. I could probably learn some more from her. Uh, so, you know, just everything I, c- I could ever want. And, uh, and so I'll never forget she was on tour. She was traveling and, um, and I-, I was looking at her in the mirror. I was, you know, sitting in the dressing room. She was getting ready to go about 15 minutes before she went on stage. And, and um, and she was sitting there, and, and God spoke to me and said, I need, you to, I need you to lead her. And I was like, really? Right now? <laughs> you know, I was like, ah, really? And what does that mean to I'm you? looking at this, like, you know. And uh, he goes, no, I, I want you and need you to lead her. And, and so anyways, I, I told her, I, I told her, you know, right then and there, I said, you know, what, what, would you, what would you do if we took all that extra stuff off the table, you know, and just did it Jesus' way and make sure that, you know, and... And she was all, she was like, really, Elab- do that? Elaborate what that means. Because there's a lot of people out here, their minds are going a whole, whole lot of different places right now. And uh, <laughs> we want to know. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about sex. So, yeah, yeah, you know, we want to know. So, you know, I, for me, for me um, I, I knew that God had brought me into her life to, to bless her and for her to bless me. And um, to bless so many people with the, with the impact that she has, that I have, we're not going to be perfect by any means. Like you know, it's not life's not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but he's 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 uh, anointed both of us. He, uh, I, I know that uh, he's calling for us to do something miraculous, something special. And I told her, I said that um, I said to her, and she completely agreed. And it was is is the fact that um, could we love each other without that? If you can really love somebody without that, 
then you can really love somebody. Look at you. So, yeah. so I need, I, I ain't gonna lie to y'all now. I need y'all to pray for us. <laughs> I know y'all seen it on the screen now. <laughs> See, what you need to do is get one of these real quick. I can hook you up real quick. Right here. Can buy the, <laughs> wow. I can buy the moon, buy the bang. <laughs> That's good. We're if good. If there's a 10, she's a 15. I got you. I got you. So I need y'all to pray for me. <laughs> pray for my brother. You know, so tell me. Tell keep me what my you mind clear. <laughs> keep my heart clear. <laughs> tell, uh, I, wa I want y'all to hear kind of what he just said. So. He's NFL Super Bowl. She's singer, travels the world. They both go here and there. The high flight, and they're gonna say no. But in that area of sex, we're gonna try to, we're gonna honor God. So now, now, so for all y'all who, relatively speaking, go to high school, go to college, you work at work at Starbucks, and and your life is way under the radar, relatively speaking. Um, and you know he's out here saying this publicly now. So he's got a whole bunch of people saying, oh, is that right? All those people watching online, all those people are going to tweet it and they're going to now look and watch him and scrutinize everything he does for the rest of his life until they get married. Well, the rest of his life. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but I, it's a challenge to y'all that if he can do that, that y'all can do that. You can say, I'm going to honor God in every area of my life. That's the challenge for y'all. Amen? Amen? <laughs> tell, tell us about your sister. Your sister plays basketball. Yeah, my sister plays basketball. She's, uh, she's ridiculous. Uh, she's uh, you know all-American basketball player. She's a junior in high school, going to be a senior. Um, she, she lives in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, she's going to actually have a full scholarship to play at Stanford, so she committed in ninth grade. Um, she's won a USA gold uh, medal. Um, she's the real deal. So she, she can beat me one-on-one. -on -one. She can? She, she has. <laughs> she has. How, how, how tall is she? Um, She's taller than you? She's Man, taller than you? I didn't say she's tall, though. She's... Really? About the same height. Really? She's a little shorter, but um, she's, she's, she's the real deal. She can shoot way better than me. She shoots like Steph Curry. I mean, the girl just from out of nowhere, just, you know, so. That's the net, you know, if you don't no, know. No, I, I get what shoot is. Yeah. <laughs> you said you were an athlete. I didn't know if you knew. <laughs> so, um, how you feeling about how you feeling about your team this year? Because you guys got Jimmy Graham, which is crazy. Yeah. Whoever whoever made that trade, they must have been uh, <laughs> must, uh, on the other side. I don't know how they got rid of him to y'all as much as anything. Yeah, J Jimmy is a, uh, a spectacular player. He's a guy that's um, got ridiculous talent. Um, Have you talked to Drew about that? Yeah, he doesn't really want to talk to me. Yeah, he don't, he don't want to talk. He, he's not happy about <laughs> no, that at not, all. Not, not at all. Um, and by the way, for all y'all who don't, uh, Jimmy Graham's a, a tight end, plays for the, played for the New Orleans Saints. Drew Brees is a quarterback there, and they, Jimmy Graham is like Earl World, and they traded Jimmy Graham to his team. And so Drew, Drew's now mad because, not yeah, mad, but he, you know, he's broken hearted because that's his boy. <laughs> yeah. So, but no, uh, Jimmy's, Jimmy's one of the best guys I know, get, getting to know him. You know, he's been through a lot of, a lot of stuff too, but, uh, you know, he, he's tough as can be, and, and uh, he's got great talent. So to have him on the team too, to, to add him to the other great guys that we have, from Doug Baldwin to the Curses to Marshawn Lynch to uh, the, the DBs and Sherm and all those guys and Earl Thomas and Cam and just Bobby Wagner, and we gotta, we gotta, they got to, we got to, we're loaded. So yeah, we're loaded. Good thing. Good and thing. by the way, the guy who discipled me when I got saved, when I was playing with the Chargers, uh, he was a running back. He is now the running back coach with the Seahawks and actually played for the Seahawks, came down here and played with us. Now he's a running back coach there. Yeah. Sherman Smith, Big sure. Sherm. Big Sherm Smith. So uh, he, he's one, he's, he disciples to us all. I mean, when he speaks, everybody's like, you know. So. Still, what's up, my brother? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that how he talks? What's up, my brother? Uh, I know you get asked this a lot. We want to ask you, uh, Super Bowl, 14 seconds or whatever it was. And y'all threw that pass. Yeah. Talk about that. Um, well, you know, I, I think that. Um, Do you need a hug from that? No, I'm good. <laughs> Not from you. Maybe Not from, from me. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe from Sierra. Oh, <laughs> yeah, maybe from Sierra. Hey, um, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> um, but uh, so, you know, so, the, so anyways, the, the, we, we get the call, can, the play can we, happens. There might, be some, there might be somebody 
here that didn't see it. Okay. There might be. <laughs> nah, for real. Did anybody not see it? See, these people didn't see it. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. So it's the second Super. How, uh, the second Super Bowl. How many seconds was that? Fourteen. No, it was like 20, 30 seconds left. And th if they score a touchdown, they win the game. The second Super Bowl in a row, and they're on like the one. One, one yard line. Marshawn Lynch is on the team, but it's only second down. And there's a lot of other guys on the team. But there's a lot of other guys on the team. <laughs> I think he's. I think he's saying we should have ran it. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I'm just trying. I'm trying to state the obvious. So then, go ahead. Now give the context. Uh, but anyway, so we, so we throw the ball. They, they make the play. They pick the ball off. They intercepted, um, so the other team got it, and they, and they lost Super Bowl. For, uh, that could have been a big deal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll be back. Um, <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, but there, there's, there's a silver need, line. There's a silver, need, you, you touched need. me earlier, so <laughs> keeping you away. Uh, there's a silver lining in it all, though. Like, Jesus is so amazing. Um, and this may sound crazy to some people, um, but so the play happens. They make the play, right? And, you know, in front of all those people and millions of people watching or whatever, and, and uh, you know, oops, I got this thing on me. Oops, there we go. So the play, the play happens, and, uh, you know, they, they, they pick the ball off, and I take, I take three steps. You know, so the play's here. I take the sidelines over here. I take three steps. One, two, three. And on the third step, you know, God says to me, he goes, I'm using you. And I'm like, okay. So I take another. I take a, <laughs> so I take a, I take another one, two, three. Take another my 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 sixth step or whatever. I, Come, I, I, they can't I, see you if you go outside. That, yeah, right there. So I take another. Uh, I take another step, and uh, on my on, on my another third step or whatever. And God says to me, He says, uh, He says, I want to see how you respond, but most importantly, I want I want them to see how you respond. And so, <clears throat> that was. Uh, Is that when you threw the water bottle down and started cursing it? No. no. <laughs> that didn't happen. So I, I watched you, and I saw you turn, like, you, he, he, the guy caught the ball, and you went, you turned, and you just walked away. And I was like, I watched and said, I wonder how he's going to respond. I said that to myself. Yeah. Um, and so that, that, that happens, and God says, he says to me, he says, uh, he says I, I want to see how you respond, but most importantly, I want, I want them to see how you respond. And, um, you know, the week before, you know, it was a crazy game. It was, you know, two weeks before, I should say, the NFC Championship game. We played the Packers. All well, you Packers fans. Um, we played the Packers, and it was a crazy game, um, wild. And we came back with, you know, less than three minutes left. Um, going to overtime, hit a big play, touchdown in the end zone to Jermaine Curse. Uh, Doug Baldwin makes a huge catch before that. And, and both those guys are believers, by the way. Yeah. And so we make that play. Go, go, so we're going, going to our second Super Bowl in a row. And just, I, I'm not an emotional guy, really. You know, I, I, I break down, start getting really emotional, start crying on national TV, just confessing how good Jesus is. And, and then two weeks later, um, and that was a whole thing in the media, of course, you know, whatever. And so two weeks later, you know, that play happens. And God says to me, like I said again, he says to me, he goes, he goes, I'm using you. Take another three steps. And he goes, I want to see how you respond. But most importantly, I want them to see how you respond. And, you know, so over the past, I don't know how many months it is, it's been five months or six months or whatever, I've just really um, have been able to see how God's been using me, you know, and, and that everything is not perfect. And, and, and being a Christian, you know, I think sometimes as Christians we lose this. We lose this uh, idea of, like, we're supposed to, everybody's supposed to be perfect, you know, and everything's going to happen just like when you're, when, you, when you're a believer, when you're a follower of Christ, everything's going to fall in place the way you want it to. Boom, 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 boom. But that's not it. Because otherwise we wouldn't have to use Jesus. We wouldn't have to be there. He wouldn't, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't be necessary in our lives to help us through things. And like it says in James 1, it says, consider it pure joy when you go through trials and tribulations. And so that's like one of my favorite scriptures. Consider it pure joy. You know, so I, I think about that scripture and, and it's like, you know what, God's going God's gonna to put me in that one yard line situation again. You know, when I was, we, I lost, I, we lost the Rose Bowl, no, no time left, that same Rose Bowl. We lost the Rose Bowl with no time, you know, on the clock. And I, I, I never forget, I went to the media thing and, you know, the press conference or whatever. And I said, you know, God's going to use this for, for another time. When I, whenever I go to a Super Bowl, when something happens, like I'm going to win a Super Bowl because of this. When that happened to you, when, you, when the guy said, I'm, I'm going to show the world, I'm going to use you, but I want to show the world how you're going to respond. 
when you threw the interception, how did it feel? And what I mean, did it, did it hurt you and did, and did God's peace come on you or, or were you at peace the whole time? Or did it hurt you for still to this moment? Oh, how, how? Oh, no, it definitely hurt. No, I, I hate losing. If anybody hates losing, you know, and, and, and the, feel, the, the feeling of like, man, like I lost that game, you know. So when God said that to you, did you say, man, God, why, why can't we do it another time? Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you question God and sometimes you don't. And I, I think that there's a lot of times in life, where, like, I, I question God. I'm like, God, why did this happen? Why did that have to happen? You know, why, you know, why did this relationship not work, you know? And, and that's another thing, too, is just like, you know, just thinking about relationships or life just in general, you know, um, just making sure that you're clear-minded, you know, going into a situation, go, coming out of a situation, making sure that you find the peace of God and, and through all that. Um, and so that's been really important for me and my growth. You know, I'm not perfect. Nobody in this room is. You're not perfect. Nobody is. And, and sometimes we, we get so focused on Christians judging Christians or back and forth with Christians judging non-Christians that we push each other away rather than doing that. There's know? somebody out here right now, they don't know Jesus as their Savior. They go to church, they watch football, they're here because you're here, or they're here because of a girl who's four years older than them <laughs> <laughs> that they want to come see because they, they, they said there's some hot babes that go to the rock, so they come into the rock. Um, uh, but they want to know about well, what does it mean to be a Christian? In one minute, tell them what it, how to, I want to be a Christian. So what is that? how do I do that? How do you do that or what does it mean to be Both. a Christian? Both. Okay, well, first of all, I think what it means to be a Christian is a person uh, that is a sinner, just like everybody is, but a person that's saved, a person that believes that Jesus died on the cross, that rose again for our sins and has come to earth to heal us. And that's what it means to be a Christian, that we're not perfect, but yet... Uh, through, the, through, the, through the Holy Spirit that he is he's constantly healing us, you know, constantly with us, constantly there for us. I think, though, for to, to how to be a Christian, similar to what I was saying earlier, is you have to, you have to confess, like, Lord, I believe in you. I, you're, you're the one and only. You're the way. Uh, forgive me for my sins. Uh, and that's a constant process, even when we're saved. Even when we're saved, you still have to ask, for, you know, Jesus to forgive you for your sins and the things that you do wrong, the things that we think wrong or whatever that may be, you know. Um, and so that's how you become a Christian. And Jesus comes in your life. And at that moment, everything won't be easy necessarily. Now, some things will be amazing. And you'll be like, wow, like, wow, like, God is so good. And there's awesome times like, hmm, that didn't add up. Uh, but there's a reason why it didn't add up. Either because you want to do it your way mm -hmm. or God was preparing you for something greater. Mm -hmm. And uh, and, and, the, and the times that I've found the most uh, revealing times, the times that I've, I've grown the most and be like, man, like, God, just thank you. Thank you. Just thank you through it all. Like, those are the times that were the hardest times. And, uh, you know, I think one of the most important things as a Christian is being able to thank Jesus through the good and the bad. You know, just um, constantly, like, just thank you. Just thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, thank you for, your, thank you in advance, Jesus. Thank you in advance for this mm -hmm. opportunity. Thank you for giving it to me. Thank you for what's going to happen. Thank you for the hardships. Thank you for the growth that you're going to have me. Thank you for my children. Thank you for all the things that, mm -hmm. the people that you have in my life. Thank you for the people that have you know, out of my life now. Thank you for all those things that have gone on to help me to become where I am today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for where, where you're going to put me, you know. So uh, just constantly thanking him and, and, and glorifying him. And, and, and I, I've been, I, we talked about this two days ago. Is The thing that I keep saying, um, it, and it's been really on my heart, is the idea of saying walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Walk in love and walk, walk in the spirit. You know, because, you know, it talks about Romans 8. I'm not sure if we can pull that up or not. But, like, when you walk in the, when you walk in the spirit, you get spirit things. When you walk in the spirit, you get spirit things. You know, when you walk in the flesh, you get flesh, you know, get, you get, you get worldly things. And, and uh, so that's when, that's when, sometimes I wonder, like, why, why do we experience pain? Why do we experience, like, why does this have to happen? Well, because of the sins of the world, because the sins, that, the sins that we've had, that we've done, or things that have happened to us, you know, we, we go through things, you know. And, and I think that ultimately uh, there's, a bigger, there's a bigger place, there's a, there's a place that, you know, I know I want to go, you know, and, and that I have to just to, to walk in it. Mm -hmm. And, I, and on, along the way, I'm going to have some, I'm gonna have some times where I'm going to get knocked down, mm -hmm. but, but I'm right, somebody's right there to pick me back up. 
whether if it's Jesus, whether if it's Jesus and somebody else, whether if it's, you know, I just had to, you know, just pray to God, like, Lord, just help me get through this somehow, some way. So in a, in a couple of minutes, uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Uh, the Bible says all have sin and all means, all. all means all, all means everybody. Everybody means everybody. Uh, and the Bible says the penalty of sin is death, physical death, spiritual death, physical death. This decays, goes in the grave, in a, in, a, in a coffin, spiritual death, the eternal separation from God. And when you ask, when you acknowledge that Christ wants a relationship with you, he wants to restore you to what he created you to be. God created us to have a relationship and walk close to him. And the further we drift from him, the less we can be like him. And he wants to forgive you of your sin, which is everything that separates you from God. And once he, separ once he forgives you and cleanses you of everything that separates you from him, he draws you close to him. And the more you become close to him, the closer you get to him, the more you become like him. But you have to ask him to forgive you and acknowledge that, God, I, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and that I'm distant from you. And I want you to forgive me and draw me close to you and ask me to be and ask, and ask you to be my savior. And so he did that at 14. I did it at 24. I was 10 years behind him because I'm uh, not as smart. I was in Catholic school for eight years, and there was no cute girl I went there to see. Because <laughs> I, I wasn't uh, a carnal little kid that went to church to go see girls. <laughs> ha! Uh, but I, I was 24 years old. I was playing. I was, it wasn't until I was in the league and, and, and using cocaine and, and living wild. But I said, Lord, I, don't, I have all this and I have nothing. And so I gave my life to Christ. And so in a minute, we're going to uh, give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. Some of y'all have prayed a prayer before and, and your life is still empty. It's still kind of, eh. It's because you pro either you really didn't give your life to Christ or you gave it and took it back. You said, Lord, I'll give you. And then you said, I, no, I want to do it my way. And we're going to give you an opportunity in the same prayer to say, Lord, I want to recommit my life to you. Uh, before we do that, um, is there anything we can pray for you for? And by the way, I like that every time I see you, you've got, you got a beard, then you got a mustache, then you got long hair, then you got curly hair, then you got your, your mohawk, and then you got your fade, then your ball. I, man of many talents. You're man, I, well, your Bob is a man of many talents. <laughs> <laughs> you're a very patient brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just, similar to what Paul prays for, spiritual wisdom, you know, just um, praying that God continues to give me insight, continues to give me opportunity to lead and encourage, mm -hmm. uh, to forgive others and for me to be forgiven, praying for, um, like I said, spiritual wisdom. You know, I, I think that when, when Jesus is in the room, amazing things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jesus is in the room, amazing things happen. I, every time I go on the football field, I, I believe that Jesus is right there walking with me um, on that football field. He's giving me that opportunity just not for wins and losses. I've been, I've been fortunate enough to win a lot of games, but it's, it's bigger than that. Uh, uh, my goal on this earth, what God has called me for is to win people's hearts, to win people, to, to, to help people get saved. And, to, and I think that's, that's why God gives me so many opportunities. And through it all, being able to tell the story of it all and, and to go through the ups and downs. And at some point, I'm going to be able to look back and think, you know what, that was it. You know what, that, you know, like the journey that you, you put me on was an amazing journey. Um, there's one last thing. I want. Can we pull up Romans 8? I really want to read that. Can we pull that up somehow? Or can I read it out? I, just, I don't want to read the whole thing. Okay. I'll read, I'll read the, uh, I know you got to get going. I know these people want to go home and get some dinner. But I think this, God's been speaking to me on, on this for a while. And by the way, when, you know, one of the reasons we bring guys like this here for you is to see the real people that are the people you see on television. That they're real people just like you dealing with the same things. And we all just got to kneel before God just like everybody else. Is it good to meet people like this? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Um, Romans, Romans 8, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Talking about the Holy Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. 
For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those, this is so good, for the, verse 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amen. And so I, I think about that. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I, I know that each person in this room, no matter what you've been through, no matter all the successes or all the failures, or whether if you're 26 years old and have been to two Super Bowls, or if you're, you're 14 years old sitting in the crowd and you're a bad kid like I was and trying to get to two Super Bowls, or if you're a girl that's been through some heartaches, or a guy that's been through some situations that you know, don't look too good, you know, ultimately we're all searching for life and peace. And so that's what I pray for you guys and for myself is that we be spiritually minded, that we surround ourselves around spirit things, that we um, ultimately be surrounded by people that want to encourage us and not discourage us. But yet, we still have to be around, like just like Jesus was, he still was around others. He still was able to go and touch other people and to not judge people and to, and to, and to save the prostitute or save this person or that person. So don't forget that either. And so when we, when we go in different you know, areas, like I, kept, like I said earlier, we have to walk in the spirit, you know? And we're not gonna be perfect along the way, but as, as we surround ourselves around others, it's gonna help guide us to where God is calling us to be. And we're all searching for life and peace. And so that's, that's my prayer, and I, that's what I know mm -hmm. God's calling for me to continually to push and continue to search and continue to find, uh, like, you know, like it talks about in Matthew 7, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so for me, it's just like, okay, Lord, just keep showing me. Keep, you know what, this day was a great day. Okay, give me another great day. Give me a better day than yesterday. Mm -hmm. This day wasn't good. Okay, tomorrow will be better, you know. L Lord, and sometimes you're going to go through some things. Like I, I, I've been through some stuff that I, 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 I wasn't good, and I've gone, I've, I'm, I'm at where I am now or whatever. And I look back at it, and you go like, you know what, sometimes it's, it's okay to look back to see how far you've really come. Mm -hmm. It's okay to look back sometimes to see how far you've really come. Um, and so I, I just, I'm just blessed to just um, to think and to know so many people that from, from Miles to some of my other friends that are just constantly just, you know what, you know what you're anointed, you're anointed, just don't forget that, you know, like just keep, keep, keep being encouraged, you know, through the good times and the bad. Um, and one of my favorite songs uh, is, pra is Praise Is What I Do. You know, and, and it and talks about, you know, praising him through the good times and the bad times, through the happy times, through the sad times. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a song I listen to on the field over and over again on repeat. You know, and I would sing it for you, but I won't, I'll let Sierra <laughs> sing and I'll throw. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to pray for him and then I'm going to have him pray for you. But there's some of you out there right now, you're ready to give your life to God. You're ready to walk away from your life the way it is, whether to you that means giving your life to God or to you it just means I want a better life. And that better life is trusting in Jesus Christ. I want to be committed to trusting in Jesus Christ. I want to be committed to living for Jesus Christ. Because you all know who you are, that you're faking it or you're not doing it at all or you just keep falling down and you just feel defeated. But God says you're not defeated. I haven't given up on you. And you want to say, Lord, I thank you. I, I want to try again. I want to submit my life to you. Amen. So right now I'm going to ask all you to bow your heads. And as your heads are bowed, I just want you to lift your hand up towards uh, Russell. And we're going to pray for him. And then I'm going to lead you into prayer. Lord, we thank you for our brother Russell. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for putting him in the league for such a time as this. We thank you for his faith. We thank you for his outspokenness. We thank you for how you've blessed him and how he's responded in good times and bad times. And we pray that you protect him as surrounded with godly men and women. We pray you protect he and his relationship with Ciara, that you honor their commitment to be pure before you, godly before you. And Lord, we, uh, we just thank you for him and pray at such a young age. He's been through so much. We pray uh, that all the years that are ahead of him, and all the successes and opportunities, he would use your wisdom. That you would give him the wisdom of Solomon, who was the wisest man, the richest man ever to live. But he asked for wisdom, not victory over his enemies, but wisdom. And with that wisdom, he was able to accomplish everything you called him to, to do. And I pray that for Russell as well. 
You can put your hands down. Lord, I just pray for our church. I pray for all the campuses. Lord, there are people who are sitting in seats in one of our campuses. There's people watching online. And they're ready to surrender their life to you. They've heard a testimony of someone who by the world standard is very successful. But by your standard says, I still need God. I have to have God. I can't do it without God. It means nothing without God. And you've come to the conclusion that what you've been chasing in the world is not the answer for your soul. That Jesus is the answer for your soul. And so if you would like to surrender your life to Jesus for the first time or you want to recommit your life, whatever it is, it's going to be one prayer for all of you. It's a prayer of surrender. Saying, dear Lord, I surrender. Holy Spirit, I want you to fill my life, take over my life. I want to live for God. And I want to have the success in God's eyes that pleases him. Whether it looks like success in man's eyes, it doesn't matter. I want the peace of God, the purpose of God, the clarity of God for my life. And so if that represents what's in your heart, I want you to pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart. A prayer of faith, a prayer of surrender. In the privacy of your heart, pray, dear God, I believe you love me. I believe that you sent Jesus, your son, to die on the cross for my sin and rise from the dead. I believe that I'm a sinner. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. Please come live in my heart. I surrender my life to you. I commit my life to following Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. As all of our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, in whatever campus you're in, in a minute I'm going to ask you to stand up. And by standing up, you are making a public confession that you are giving your life to Christ, whether for the first time or you're recommitting your life to Christ. But when I count to three, I don't want you to think about or worry about anybody sitting around you. I just want you to worry about what does God think? How much God loves you? And then I want you to stand. You can stand with me. Russell will also be standing here. We stand with Christ right now. And so when I count to three, I want you to stand up if you gave your life to Christ, if you prayed that prayer with Jesus. Jesus said if you're ashamed of him before man, he's going to be ashamed of you before his father. So there's no time, this is not a time to worry about what people think except what God thinks. So if you prayed that prayer for whatever reason that you want to surrender your life to Christ, I'm going to ask you to stand on the count of three. One, two, three. Just stand to your feet. God bless you, 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 very good, God bless you, stay standing, stay standing, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Now, in a minute, I'm going to ask all y'all who are standing to come down to the altar. If you're in the balcony, all you got to do is turn around and walk up and the ushers will bring you down. The rest of y'all, this is not a time, we're not done yet, this is a time to celebrate. So if you're standing up, come out of your seat, come on down to the altar, and let's give them a hand as they come on down. Amen. Amen. Come on out of your seat. Come on. God bless you. Grassy, bro. You. Yeah, God, God loves you, man. God bless Jesus you. Jesus loves you, brother. God bless Jesus you. Jesus loves you, dear. God bless you. Love you, bro. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus loves you, bro. Jesus loves you, dear. God bless you. Jesus loves you, dear. God bless you. Jesus loves you, man. God bless you. God bless you, bro. God bless you. Jesus loves you, man. Jesus loves you, bro. God bless you. Jesus loves you, bro. Amen, amen. Jesus loves you, dear. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Got you, got you, got you. God bless 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 you. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, come on. Let's give him a big hand. Come on now. Come on now. God bless you. God bless you. Oh, I love it. God bless you. 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 Amen. 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 God bless you. 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 Welcome. Amen. 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 God 
God bless you. Amen. Say Jesus. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for y'all, and then we're going to walk you into that room. And what we do every week is when we're walking into that room, we want to cheer for them. Amen. The key word that I want y'all to think about is I want y'all to say relationship. Especially y'all sitting down and standing down there. Say relationship. This is a, this is a, let's get these people coming from the upstairs and give them a big hand. Amen. Asking, asking Jesus Christ to be your Savior is a relationship. Everyone say relationship. It's not a religion. You didn't join an organization. You joined a family. It's a family. And you are one with Jesus Christ. And in that relationship, the way you, you establish and maintain a relationship is through communication, through spending time together. And the more time you spend with Jesus Christ, praying, reading your Bible, coming and being around other people who trust in Christ, learning about him, the more he transforms you into his image. It's through a relationship. It's not just information. It's a person. He's a person. Amen? So we're going to pray for you all. And then the rest of us, what we want to do is we want to cheer them as they go into that room. Can I get amen? amen? Lord God, we thank you for all these people. We thank you for their faith. We thank you for their decision. We thank you for their commitment. And we pray in Jesus' name you bless them and honor their faith and courage to come forward tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a right turn and walk this way. Let's give them a hand. Let's give them a hand. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give him a hand. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Good. Gotcha. Amen. Say Jesus. God bless you. 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 So they all get in that room. And after that. Come on, let's give one more push so they get in that room. Amen. 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 Is this thing still on? Can we turn this on? Can we turn this on, somebody? Is this yeah, you on? Got it, you're on? Can you hear me now? I think one of the most important things and, and one of the things that I've ex uh, been able to experience, you know, playing professional sports and just being around a lot of people is those people that just got saved though, right? This is where the church is really necessary because that's where they're going to get tried. Like they, they've been through some stuff or whatever. They've been questioning stuff and just like we have too or whatever at times. But they're really going to be like over, overwhelmed. Dude. Like they're going to they're feel like, oh, man, Jesus is really in their life. There's a reason why they came up. But we still have to be there for them and encourage them and bless them and, and make sure that you find a face that you can bless. Because sometimes we just ignore, like once somebody gets saved, we just go, oh, okay. and then we just keep moving, you know. 
don't just keep moving. You know, there's, 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 there's room for everybody, rather if, whether it's this guy or myself and, and, and the impact that we have, you guys have the same amount of impact. You know, every, everybody, you know, like, like I said, when, when I was 14 years old, and I'm sorry, I'm going to be preaching again. When I was 14 years old, though, <laughs> I was 14 years old. God spoke to me, though, right now. So I was 14 years old. <laughs> um, being 14 years old, when Jesus walked in the room, he said, I'm preparing you. I'm preparing. I was 14. But yet, I didn't, I didn't yet, I, I had an idea of where God was going to take me and where, the places that he was going to show me, and you know, athletically and all that. But he was preparing me because I came in the league when I was 22, 23 years old. And everybody's timetable is different. His timetable was different than mine. But he still has the same amount of impact, you know. He didn't, he didn't know Jesus. I, I knew Jesus at 14, but I was still you know, in and out at times and all that. But, like, everybody's timetable is different. And each person in this room, you have an impact. And the first step is impacting their lives, the people that just got saved. So if you can find a face to encourage, whether well, if it's the people that just got saved or the people in your community or the people that you work with or the people that you go to school with or you play ball with or whatever that may be, you know, find a way to impact somebody's life each day and then you'll see the snowball effect. You'll see the God snowball effect. God bless you.